over the past month or two rise of kingdoms has had multiple in-person events in various different countries that have revealed a lot of information most of which hasn't actually been discussed here on the internet or at least not in english so today we're going to take a look at some of the translations from these events starting with the one that happened in korea a few weeks ago and they shared some really interesting stuff they even talked about the museum buffs for season two commanders which i think is really important i I'm in season of conquest right now and i actually find that i'm using martel with his museum buff more than i'm using my alex now of course that depends on the scenario but the tankiness that martel adds to my herald is just it's so good and i feel bad that i'm not using alex a little bit of tankiness for alex would go a really long way so let's jump right into it first of all what is my source for this information well this is a youtuber who goes by the name of ihara and i also talked about them in the video where they revealed all of the information that we needed about formations three or four days before we got it here in english and that was official rise of kingdoms information that was released to the chinese version of the game that we just didn't get that information until later so ihara has a pretty good track record you can go ahead and subscribe to them there will be a link in the description below but the first thing we're going to talk about is the three-year anniversary event that happened in korea so i guess this was like uh the banquet hall or whatever sort of uh event location that they rented out for this particular event you could see rise of kingdoms the logo down here so this looks like it was on uh, october 8th so here is the first bit of information that we received from people who attended this event you can see the information is in korean at the top and ihara has translated it to chinese on the bottom feel free if you guys uh you know speak either of these languages or understand either of these written languages to comment down below if i'm wrong about any of this because i'm using google translate here and google translate isn't actually great right off the bat you could see google translate didn't even pick up the korean at the top here but it did pick up the chinese text and it says a second batch of museums will be added update next year or so so here we know that they are definitely planning to implement season two museum buffs we won't be seeing it before the end of this year but it should be coming sometime in 2023 hopefully near the beginning of 2023 at least the first three to six months because i really am starting to feel like those commanders are definitely showing their age at this point there are so many good cavalry commanders that even saladin who is heralded as one of the best season two commanders is starting to show his age a little bit i'm not saying he's bad i'm just saying that you know xy with nevsky or nevsky with joan prime or nevsky with william these are all commander pairings that i would say are probably better than a saladin pairing so i would love to see new buffs for saladin of course alexander we've already talked about but furthermore seeing buffs for constantine what can they do for constantine to make him relevant what can they do for genghis khan to make him relevant i feel like those commanders need such a significant buff to even discuss them that it, it's going to be difficult uh, for me to imagine what they could do but regardless any sort of buff that we can get for commanders that are only slightly outside of the meta which i would consider alexander and saladin to be slightly outside the meta that's going to be really important so we love to see that uh the next thing they talked about is vip 19. um they have no plans for now for implementing vip 19. um i've said this in in previous videos i've also discussed this on my discord the images for vip 19 and vip 20 are already in the game files they have been since the game was released so when they released rise of kingdoms all the way back in 2018 they had images for 20 vip levels the game launched with i believe 15 of them and they've slowly been adding them over time the highest right now is vip 18. truthfully i think there is no need for a vip 19. vip 18 already gets significant amounts of buffs and in reality i think they should just do something to let players exchange their vip points for gems or something like that because th there's just if you're vip 18 right now you don't really need any further advantages you already have a ton the next thing that they talked about is letting you drop five troops at the same time what i believe they're referring to here is when you click and drag people want to be able to just drag and drop five army presets all at once that's something that i have thought about before and on paper it sounds like it would be super convenient and it would be super good like a good implementation for the game but honestly uh, it looks like they're not considering doing that here we don't think we'll make the above request um i can see why they would do that right you know if you're jumping in and out of your city 
hitting one March and instantly surrounding it times five and then jumping back in. That's not going to feel great. Right. And I know that, you know, if you're the person doing it, it sounds really cool, but imagine, a, a, you know, a T five whale who's got, you know, 200 million power and all the best expertise stuff. Um, they can immediately just melt down one of your armies in you know one skill cycle and then jump back in there's not you can't even react to it because it's so fast so i can definitely see the challenges there as much as i would love to be able to do that you have to consider that even the whales would be able to do that as well and i don't know if that's great for the game they also discussed improving uh, olympia matchmaking so they are planning on doing that obviously they're probably always trying to make matchmaking better for everything so that's no surprise there next they talked about a bunch of different updates that are coming in the future um they talked about the lost kingdom shop it does appear that they are planning on implementing more things into the kvk shop which i think is good i think we haven't seen a massive change to the kvk shop in a while so more rewards there will be nice especially because right now we've had the same rewards for such a long time that a lot of players already have a lot of the accessories they already have some of the skins and, and things like that uh, and also everybody kind of agrees that the kvk shop needs an infantry skin right there's just not a really great infantry skin in there at all like there's zero so yeah i think players really would like to see that next uh, new content such as sunset is needed for the main game uh content that users can progress through teamwork uh, is scheduled to be updated so yeah it looks like they are working on new game modes similar to sunset canyon uh which is some which is good um i was actually interviewed by shappy gaming i think it was like a week ago at this point and that's one of the things that i talked about with regards to wanting in the game i want more game modes like sunset canyon where you can do pvp and it does feel fun and engaging but it's not like a you know super expensive like kvk the next bit of information that they revealed at this event is a little bit more about the new kvk which isn't that exciting uh this information would have been more exciting back when this event happened you know uh, early in october but at this point we already know a lot about the new kvk so the fact that you're gonna have light and dark teams just like in season uh, three kvk that we already knew so that's not that exciting but what is exciting is their plans to launch a new korean commander so essentially what they're going to do um is the same thing as they did for isun sin which apparently what they did was ask the korean community to vote on what commander they want to see into the game and then they're going to implement that commander so apparently the last time that they did this um the most popular vote was for isun sin and so they implemented that commander next they're going to again receive votes here and whatever the korean community wants as the new commander that's what they're going to uh work on and implement and i think that's the best way to do this it shows that they care about the korean community and the korean player base and also it it's a good way to ensure that you know they're not implementing commanders that are maybe a little bit controversial in their history you know it's if a lot of people want it then that's generally going to be a good thing so that's exciting now we don't really know anything about this other than the fact that they are planning on implementing a new korean commander that's pretty much all that we know and it will be player driven next they talk about formations which at this point again this information came out in early october we already know about formations so we can kind of skip through that you know melee or range we already know that as well so that's pretty much all the information that we got from the uh from the korean event now we also learned that they gave away like a little you know in-game coupons and redeem codes i'm sure these are already redeemed so i wouldn't even bother trying but this is just more evidence that this is not fake information this was actually a real event here you could see the little thank you player card up in the top right corner and then here ihara discusses some of the uh little raffle rewards that they had apparently they gave away like samsung galaxy uh airbuds and you know smart watches and things like that so i guess it was a, a pretty cool event right we see more um information rise of kingdoms third anniversary like backpack and things like that I think these are really cool events i would love to see them do something like this in new york city or even i mean i guess it might be more likely to do this in los angeles i'm really not sure but i would love for them to do something like this that uh maybe i can i can go to i think a player meetup is a really cool idea and i would totally be down if it was something that i uh that i could attend next let's take a look at the video they posted just one day ago at this point and this was another sort of uh in real life 
face to face with the developers we have some images here from the actual event and here they discuss a lot of interesting things um the i guess lead producer of rise of kingdoms was actually there and was the one answering a, a lot of the questions the source here is pretty much the the best source that you that you could have for rise of kingdoms now the translation however is is definitely going to be a little bit rough especially because this is again this comes from allegedly somebody who was at this event right so this is their understanding of the information that was presented um there's nothing to really stop them from lying but i do have a, a translation of the information that's on the screen so i guess the primary focus of this event was to discuss that they were slowing down the implementation of new commanders so right now they mentioned that a new commander comes out roughly every three months right it's been faster than that in the past but it's also been uh you know most recently i think we had to wait like 90 something days for a new commander for the maybe the archers i don't remember specifically but it's uh, you know around three months for a new commander and here it looks like they're planning on lengthening that to seven months so more than double the amount of time for a new commander release that's going to be insane because when you think about that that means there's only going to be like two new sets of commanders per year right so if we got a new commander in january we wouldn't see another new commander until july and that's actually crazy to think about but i also feel like that's good for the game like in one perspective it makes it so that way there's less new and hype things to discuss right new commander releases are exciting and it happens at this point like four times per year which i love to see once per quarter but you know if we release it to twice a year or even slower than that um it's gonna those new commanders have to be really impactful right so i don't really know how that's going to work there's going to be again fewer things to get hyped about but at the same time it's also important for them to slow down the commander releases so that way they're not implementing just random garbage right they put mock to zoom in the game they put suleiman in the game these are commanders that are objectively just not useful like, there's so few uses for these commanders that even the whales don't even really care about them they don't, they don't need them right it's it's pointless to have them in the game uh, and i think that having you know fewer commander releases that are more impactful i think that is generally a good thing and it also will give free to play players and low spenders a chance to sort of catch up a little bit right it's gonna you know over time as they release fewer and fewer commanders there's not that fear of oh if I invest in Joan of Arc Prime right now what about the next set of cavalry commanders what if that set is you know game busted right it's game breaking what if they're what if the next infantry commander is so much better than Joan Prime that I wasted my sculptures investing in Joan Prime right that's sort of the the fear that free to play and low spenders have right now myself included I have over a thousand uh, 1100 sculptures saved up and I want Pakal but I know that we should be getting a new infantry commander here within the next few months probably in two months or less at this point and if I invest in Pakal right now what if that next commander is absolutely insane so I think the slowdown here is good from that perspective it gives gives more players the chance to collect an expertise more of the commanders I mean we have so many commanders in the game at this point that this makes sense now what I think would be interesting is and they've talked about this um a few months ago where they plan on actually implementing more civilizations or implementing civilizations at a faster rate and here they're talking about introducing commanders at a slower rate so what if we got two new civilizations every year and the commanders that came with those civilizations were the new commanders that came into the game and then they could have a big marketing push behind the new commanders behind the new civilization and it all would be tied together and I think that would be super cool to have like like they implemented Ragnar right with this big marketing push and it turns out he sucks right because they just they just needed to put a new commander in the game so if they synergized and linked these two big events I think that would be really hype right because then we start to speculate what's the new Civ what are the new commanders are going to come with it and how good are they going to be I think that'll be really really cool furthermore they do say that the seventh generation of infantry will come in December so here we are uh by the time this goes up this is going up on Halloween um so you know we're we're less than we're like a month and a half away from new infantry so start 
saving your sculptures you heard it here first save your sculptures i would be willing to bet that these infantry come out either december 5th or december 19th that's my best guess for the new infantry commanders i think they're going to time it in either in between thanksgiving event and the christmas event or they're going to link it maybe more close to the christmas event that's my that's my guess they also mentioned here in the future the remote mine cart and what they mean by that is ranged siege by the way will be the main force and the ranged commanders will be released in March or April of next year. So this is a little confusing for me. And that's obviously because of the translation, but it seems to be the case that in the future ranged combat is either going to be exclusively for siege or maybe there's going to be siege generals which is what they're saying here siege commanders and maybe it's just going to be so much more beneficial to have siege as your ranged unit than any other type that you'll basically have to do it right like right now i could use saladin and william together and i could put infantry in them right does that make sense no but you could do it so in this way i think they're going to release siege commanders that are specifically for ranged combat and yes you'll be able to use the range formation for whoever you want but if you pick the ranged commanders as a troop type uh that will greatly enhance your ranged combat that's my assumption of this i the translation here is not great and if you want to see the actual text if you understand written uh chinese then feel free to tell me in the comment section below what you think this actually is or means it also looks like they're going to be changing the order with which they release new commanders so it's going to be infantry cavalry archers and then it's going to be ranged commanders so maybe we officially no longer are getting uh leadership commanders that could be the case i mean they skipped the leadership cycle for joan of arc prime uh and they went straight to cavalry and again this is a little bit weird because right now the way that it works is that infantry comes after cavalry right so they've already said in december we're getting infantry does that mean we're going to get another cavalry after that i have no idea what they're doing but here it's pretty safe to say that we probably won't be getting any more leadership commanders and instead in march or april we're going to see perhaps a ranged siege uh troop type for commanders that will replace leadership and they might actually change up the order with which commanders come into the game point number three here is again a poor translation basically what this says is that in april they're going to do a major revision to arc of osiris right that's what the the egyptian uh, they're talking about egyptian here they're talking about the egyptian game mode which is arc of osiris right so and again there's actually captions on ihar's video if you want to watch uh their video again link will be in the description below you can go through the captions yourself and see exactly what they're referring to but what this is saying is that in April they're going to be adding uh what appear to be barbarians uh and things like small coffins I don't understand that in uh Ark of Osiris okay so this is going to be really interesting um they're going to be updating Ark they've never done a major update to Ark of Osiris and here they are going to be doing that which is really exciting um whether or not this affects Osiris League I have no idea I assume the next Osiris League will probably have this revision in it so that's pretty crazy to think about this next point I was not sure about it says the future main force of the leader will be located in his own garrison protecting himself is not the protection of flags and fortresses this I don't understand the translation here is too poor to really to really understand this I don't know if this means that leadership commanders will be uh basically best used for city defense which is already the case but here they're gonna make an emphasis on it or if this just means that um whoever your strongest uh garrison is will just automatically be added to your wall instead of having to, I really don't know what this means at all and then the last point is uh basically they're saying after this current rotation they're gonna change the order of the new commander implementation to infantry cavalry archers and then range commanders and that also reflects what we see in bullet point two again if we get infantry in december does that mean that you know seven months from then we're gonna get new cavalry again like that makes no sense especially because they say here that in april or march or april they're gonna release uh ranged right you can check out ihara's uh video down below but here it talks about how every two weeks there's a new mightiest governor and wheel event here it looks like they're talking about maybe changing that I don't know what to make of all this i don't want to jump to conclusions and uh you know say things that are completely untrue um i think they also showed images of perhaps how ranged commanders are going to work a little bit better 
um but again i i can't i don't want to speculate too heavily on that but there are again more uh more images and if you understand written chinese then again take a look at their video you'll probably get a better idea of watching them discuss it in chinese than me speculating on this in english they also share another image of zu liang over here um originally they actually shared this image to everybody it looks like the updated version here is on the right so i'm assuming this is the infamous fan from zu liang that's a, a pretty obvious uh, thing that they needed it looks like they changed the uh the headdress here as well and maybe a couple of other things like the beard you can see more hair off uh on the right image here than you see uh over here yeah it actually looks like they just moved the fan from left to right i have no idea but this is again a commander that we knew was coming into the game for a while now i announced it on my channel uh, at this point probably like over a month ago so if you guys are interested in the latest and greatest breaking news for rise of kingdoms be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload it huge shout out to everyone who has subscribed recently we just hit 40 000 subscribers which is absolutely insane my challenge to you guys is how quickly can we get to 50 i feel like 50 is like you know what no i'm just going to be grateful for where i am so guys thank you so much drop a thumbs up on the video it helps me defeat the youtube algorithm and with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace